Hey, what's up Street Talks? This is Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So, I wanted to do a quick presentation on how to use Adobe Lightroom 5 for shooting street photography and editing and sequencing and post-processing and all the jazz. So, a lot of people when they first use Lightroom, they're a little bit overwhelmed because there's just so much stuff out there. I mean, you got all these modules here and there's all these shortcuts to learn, stuff like that. Personally, my philosophy when it comes to Lightroom is K-I-S-S. KISS, which stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. So the idea of Lightroom is, my philosophy is that you only need to ha uh, know how to use 10% of it for 90% of the functions, meaning you don't have to know every single hotkey or every single function. So for the presentation, I'll show you in terms of how I do my workflow in Lightroom, and hopefully you guys could learn a thing or two about um, you know shortcuts and tips and tricks and stuff like that. This isn't how you have to do it. These are just the, some of the ways that I do it. So when you first, uh, if you never used Lightroom before, what I recommend generally doing if, when it comes to importing photos, so just plug in your SD card, whatever. General when you're importing, you know, just click import and just the, by default, it'll import all your photos. Generally by default, Lightroom will organize all your photos according to date. And the benefit of using Lightroom is the fact that it'll organize all your photos and not import duplicates. And also the good thing about Lightroom is that it's non-destructive, meaning that you'll never edit or damage the original file. It's always an edit, um, this edited version of it. And the great thing about using Lightroom is that um, there's so many different ways to do it. And you can see lots of free YouTube videos and other resources. Uh, generally what I do is I try to do all the editing first in the very beginning then all the post-processing at the very end. So one of the, I think one of the, the problems that a lot of people have when it comes to um, you know, editing their photos, and when I say editing, I mean choosing your best shots, not post-processing, which is contrast and everything else. So when it comes to editing, I think the way to think about it is like kind of going to the grocery store. So if you go to the grocery store, you go to the grocery store, you get the milk, you get the eggs, you get the salsa, whatever, then you go back home. You don't go to the store, then go back home, then oh crap, I forgot the milk. Go back, get the eggs, go back home, and go back and forth. So what I used to do when it comes to post-processing and editing was, I looked through all the photos, so let's say I was shooting for an entire day and I had about like 500 shots. I would go through about like 20 of them, oh, find one shot, oh, I really like that shot, and you know, try to make it black and white, convert it, whatever. And then I go back to my images, search, 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 oh, this photo looks good. Um, and try to post-process that. The reason that's not so good is that you kind of jump around too much rather than um, doing all the editing in one go. You're kind of, uh, there's the, the cognitive task switching which could be quite distracting. So my suggestion is when you're editing your shots, go through all the, sh um, go through all the shots and pick, pick and choose your best shots. Then at the very end, do the post-processing. So when it comes to the difference between editing and post-processing, Editing is selecting your best images, deciding what to keep, what to kill, and post-processing is contrast, black and white, uh, cropping, and stuff like that. Generally, when it comes to editing, I think when you're using Lightroom and just in photography in general, you should spend 99% of your time editing your shots, aka deciding which shots are your best, and only 1% of your time deciding which, you know, how to post-process your photos. There's a fun saying is, no matter how much you polish a piece of turd, it's still a piece of turd. I, sometimes I have the problem is that you know, I'll take a photo and then, you know, it's like kind of an okay photo, but it's not that great. But you think, oh, you know, if I made it black and white, added a vignette, you know, played with the contrast, whatever, it'll suddenly become a good photo. But honestly, if you made a good photo with good composition, good form, good technique, you're not really going to need that much post-processing. So once again, do all the, the editing first and then post-processing at the very end. So when you first look at Lightroom, you know, library, develop, maps, book, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, you'll never ever use most of the night, uh, these things most of the time. The only things you'll ever really use is library and develop. So let me guys, uh, let me teach you guys some, some hotkeys that I found useful. So generally when it comes to looking through your photos, so I'll just kind of start, uh, let's see where I'll start. Yeah, let's say I'll just start here. So there's, when you're editing your shots, meaning choosing which uh, photos to keep or ditch, what I'll generally do is um, navigate Lightroom using these different hotkeys. So the first hotkey I want you guys to know is E. So the hotkey for E 
I can write this down. E, e is in large, okay? And if you want to go back to the grid view or gallery view, whatever is easier to remember for you, just press G. So press G to go back to gallery view, E to enlarge the image. And of course, you could just double click the uh, double click the image, or I think you could even press space. But for the simplicity's sake, E is enlarge and G is gallery view or grid view. The next one I'll teach you guys is F. So F is full screen. You guessed it right. And when I'm looking through my images, I'll often flip between G, E, and F. And uh, another cool thing to know about Lightroom is that, you know, you could just kind of collapse these modules on the left and the right and the bottom. Honestly, that takes way too long. There's a new uh, hotkey that I learned from my friend Gary Tyson is if you just want to collapse the side uh, panels, you can press the tab button, right? So tab, tab. So tab is collapse side columns. But even cooler is if you do tab plus shift, collapse all co um, columns. I don't even know if I'm spelling columns right, whatever. So to go back, if you press shift and tab, then suddenly all the, the side columns will collapse and expand. And it's kind of a toggle, you could turn it on and off. If you, if you guys are working on laptops, uh, I actually work on 11 inch MacBook Air. That's my only device. So knowing when to collapse all these things could be really beneficial because it could make your, um, you could see a lot more, more of your images, especially if you're limited on real estate like I am. So once again, E is enlarge, G is grid view or gallery view, F is full screen, tab is collapse side columns, and tab plus shift is to collapse all columns. So in terms of workflow, so workflow. There's so many different workflows out there and there's no best workflow. It's just ultimately find a workflow that works for you. And this is just generally kind of what I do. So step one is press F to make full screen. So making the first image F. And the second thing you want to do is turn on the caps lock key. So what the caps lock key does is if you turn on the caps lock key, if, you, if, you're, if you're using a Mac, I think you actually have to press the caps lock to, uh, key twice to turn it on. Make sure that little green light is on. Once you turn on the caps lock key, once you start flagging your photos or picking and choosing which ones to keep or not, so generally the hotkeys I use to flag my photos are P and X. P is to pick the shot, X is to reject the shot. And so once you have caps lock on, if you press P or X, it'll automatically advance to the next image. So let me give you a uh, demonstration. So I'm gonna make the photo full screen, turning on the caps lock key. And if I press P or X, the, the image will go to the next one. So if I pressed X, you can see it automatically advances X, 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 X. And the benefit of turning on the caps lock key is that if you don't have the caps lock key on, after pressing P or X, you have to press the arrow key, which is kind of a waste of time. So if any of you guys use Gmail or anything like that, the benefit of using uh, you know, caps lock, it's almost like the send and archive plus open up next email. It just kind of keeps everything a little bit more, um, uh, a lot faster. And when it comes to uh, going through your shots. So then the, the third step is press either P or X. So some general criteria. So P is pick is if you think it is a good shot, right? X is reject. And if you think it is a bad shot or a maybe shot. So based on my experiences, <laughs> if you're shooting uh, and you're looking through your photos, we all have those uh, moments where you have a photo and you're kind of like a maybe. It's like, oh, you know, it's pretty good, but not all the things are perfect about it. When in doubt, ditch. <laughs> when in doubt, ditch. Meaning, I think the really, really good shots really kind of jump out at you, and it, it's pretty obvious that they're strong shots. If you're like, oh, I don't know if it's good, if it's not, probably my suggestion is to just ditch the shot. So P, you press P if you think it's a good shot. X is reject. So if the photo is out of focus or it's blurry or it's too soft or the subject matter is boring, generally, you know, 
90 to 95 percent of the time you're going to probably reject the shot and probably uh, when it comes to pick it's only going to be about i don't know depending on your your tolerance like maybe five to ten percent and rejecting is probably going to be like um you know i would say around 90 percent let's say okay let me expand this and I'm gonna I'm gonna upload these these notes to to my blog and stuff like that, so you don't have to memorize all of this. Um, and some people ask, you know, P and Xing, does that delete the original images no, uh, or whatever? But it actually doesn't. So the great thing about Lightroom is when you're P and Xing your shots, essentially it's kind of like you're putting a sticky note next to the photo saying, oh, this is a good shot or it's it's not a good shot. And once you have all these things enabled, right? So you've made a full screen, then you turn on the caps lock key, and then you start pre pressing pure X. Um, the last, uh, or the next step is, whoa, what happened to my four? So go through all of the photos. So generally, um, so let's say I'm starting with this image. So once I have the caps lock key on, you only have to do your editing with two fingers. So one finger over the P button and one finger over the X button. So I'll look at this shot, it's like, oh, this shot's not bad, but it's not great, X, too much color in the background, X, too dark, X, X, X. Mm, this one's, this one maybe, um, but it's maybe too much detail in the head or something, X, too much in the background, X, background's a bit cluttered, X. Oh, this is better, P, this is better, P. And then sometimes when I go across a shot, which I think is like a really, really strong shot, then I'll give it a five, which is like a five star rating. Then you could see that the, the light's starting to get into his face. X, 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 X. So anyways, you're essentially ping and Xing until you get all the way to the end of, let's say however many photos you have. And once you're, once you're done with that, in the bottom right corner, uh, there's different ways to do it, but for me, the easiest way to remember is go to the filters, oops, filters off, and you wanna turn that into flagged. And once you do that, now it's only gonna show you the shots that you flagged earlier on. So these three shots we flagged. And if you ever, if at this point, then, you know, I'll start using the arrow keys, and then, you know, sometimes I'll just, um, compare the photos left to right. And sometimes you kind of get a sense of what's the better composition. So this is probably the better composition. So I'll go back to this photo. You can either exit or press U. So whatever is easier. So I'll just X this shot. Then I'm comparing these two shots. So I personally prefer this photo over this photo, even though there's a little bit more detail in this photo. So I shot these all on a, on a digital Rico. And this one is with the flash. This one's without a flash. So I kind of like the hard cutoff line above his eyes here. Whereas here, uh, while the details are really interesting, I think uh, this one is a much more dramatic shot. So I'll go back to the other shot and exit. And this is kind of a, an easy way to keep your photos um, organized and to, to edit them. And the thing, if you ever five star photo on the left side here under collections, you could go under smart collections here, five stars. And all the photos you've ever five starred will kind of show up in the section right here. And if you ever want to, uh, if you ever want to unstar a photo that you don't like, you can press zero, and then it'll remove from that queue. So to go back to where we were, so let's see, where were we? Not there. Yeah. So true on this day. So let's say, um, so those are pretty much the fundamentals. Um, if you want to develop the photo, the hotkey for develop. Right? Guess what the hotkey for develop is? Right? Is D is for develop. Whoops. D is for develop. So once you go into the, the develop tab, there's so many things that you could do to, um, to post process your photo. Generally, you could stick in the basic section. And the, the cool thing about Lightroom is that it's organized top down, meaning all the things from the top are the ones that you use more often. And the lower you go down this list here, it becomes a little bit less often. Um, so, you know, if you're shooting color, you can adjust the white balance, temperature, tint and that. And generally when it comes to the, the sliders, what I t tend to do is not very scientific at all. You just kind of go through these one by one and dragging them left and right. 
I'm just seeing kind of what looks good to your eyes. Um, personally, when it comes to black and white images, I like really contrasty, gritty black and white. So, you know, I'll play with uh, the whites, the, the contrast to make a really punchy black and white image. But post-processing, it's kind of like cooking. Um, some people like their food really, really salty and some people don't. Um, and generally, when you go through this list, the one thing I do recommend is be careful of clarity. Too much clarity can make your photos look like way too HDRE. It's just, you start getting this like artifacting around the edges, it just doesn't look very pretty. Um, generally, I try not to, if I use clarity, I don't recommend using more than like, I don't know, like 10 to 20. So everything, every like everything in life, uh, moderation is nice. And when it comes to uh, post-processing photos, I I actually recommend just sticking to presets because it's almost like shooting a film where you shoot one film, you kind of have a consistent look, apply the preset, and then based on that, you could adjust. So um, good presets to have, Visco, VSEO, they make great uh, presets. And I've also made tons of free presets um, that I personally use. So my black and whites, I'll use like, um, like this Neopan 1600 preset. And I'll just kind of go through all these different um, all these different presets to kind of see which one looks well uh, or which one looks good for my shot. And then I've also made some like color ones so you could kind of check those out as well. And they just, they're all free on my blog if you just Google Eric Kim presets. Yeah, free film presets. And for you guys, since I love you guys so much, um, you guys just come here and then download the, the presets. Um, if you guys don't know how to download and import presets, it's pretty easy. So let's say you just download them, um, you extract them. So they're like in my downloads folder. Go open up Lightroom. Scroll up uh, to ch -ch 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 under user presets. What you do is you just right click user imports, click import, go to your downloads folder and then select all. So what I generally do is command A, click import, and then all these presets are gonna show up, all right? And so, you know, usually I'll use like this Neopan 1600 preset and based on that, you know, I'll just kind of play with the, the exposure afterward and yeah, just kind of see what looks good to me. And when you're kind of done with the shot, what my recommendation is, is um, I actually try to keep everything into quote, quote, physical folders on my computer because if, if your Lightroom catalog crashes, you're kind of screwed. So under export, you know, you'll just kind of put it wherever you want. So like, let's say under your pictures and let's say this is like my City of Angels project, click this folder here. Don't have to put in a subfolder. Yeah, you can rename it. This could be like face tattoo or or you know, cross tattoo, because there's a cross tattoo on his eye. I usually use JPEG, 100% quality, don't resize it, and I just check sharpen, why not, and just click export. And now on my computer, I have all the photos organized um, with different versions here. Uh, another thing I wanted to teach you guys with Lightroom is, so let's say you're working on a project, right? So there's all these different photos you've taken across different days and you want to keep them organized within Lightroom. A cool thing you could do in Lightroom is create um, collections. So let's say I like this shot. Mm, let's say I like this shot. I'm just holding command. Let's say I like her. I've already looked through these photos so I already know what I'm looking at. Let's say I like this shot. And if I want to add them all to a collection, I could just press plus, create collection. Let's say downtown LA include selected photos, create. And so now here on the side, all the photos that I've taken from downtown LA will show up here. And the cool thing about a collection that you can't normally do is you could actually reorder the photos. So let's say I'm doing a mini project on like faces in downtown LA. So, you know, let's say I kind of like these photos, I'm kind of moving them around. Another tip is when I'm looking at the photos, I'll increase the sizes of the thumbnails. So it's like, okay, what well, looks good? I like this as a leading image. I like her in the center. I like her on this way. This shot I don't like as much, so you could press delete. Deleting doesn't actually delete the photo; it just removes it. It just removes it from this um, uh, this smart collection. And let's say, in terms of the order, I like you know him close up vertical, her all white, and then concluding with this image. 
Then what I could do if I want to export the photo to be in this order is press Command A, click Export, and let's say I just, I'm just gonna put my downloads folder, and let's say I'm gonna name this folder City of Angels, and under the file naming function, just go to Custom Name Sequence, and let's title this City of Angels. And what it will do is that it will export it with City Angels 1, City Angels 2, City Angels 3. And it makes it uh, on your computer having the, the correct sequence. So if you want to open it up, it'll look good. So 100%, no resizing, sharpen, export, OK. And it just kind of starts to chug along and do its thing. Do, 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 do. Right. And under my downloads folder, so it's getting pump that here so city of angels one city of angels two and city of angels yeah this one's not quite exported three so now all the photos will go in the proper uh sequence and yeah that's that's pretty much it um, I, don't, I don't know what else um i could mention in terms of the fundamentals uh there's so many different ways to organize your photos um so uh, if you also want to show which photos you flagged, you could just click this little thing here. And this will show you all your flagged photos. Um, or if you've starred your photos, you could under the bottom right corner click Rated. And then you could see all the photos that you've rated. I've, I've, I've already rated these images earlier, so I just kind of have it here for reference. And if you just want to go back to nothing, filters off. Another cool thing you could do is use colors so usually I don't touch the other ones and I don't I, I either give it a five star or no star so let's say I want to do like a red um, filter then I'll just press six so now this one is uh, just it's kind of like another layer so let's say you have a folder full of 25 stars and you just want to make one even a different level then you can press the uh, hotkey six to make it a red label and then once you could filter it by red label you could just kind of see this this one shot and yeah that's that's pretty much it um i don't know i don't know what else to share so these are these are just kind of the the fundamentals of uh, editing um and post-processing and yeah and um i don't know what other presentations i'll give to the um but essentially the the biggest tip i'll also give this is just kind of randomly street photography related um so this is one of my favorite photos that i've uploaded to Flickr recently i just love her facial expression and do you see the cherry on top? Yep, the Pinocchio nose. And yeah, I could show you guys some of the contact sheets, which is always fun to look. So this was the shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four, shot five, shot six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so if you see a good scene, you keep working at 16, right? And uh, this photo, the, the story behind it is, uh, I was actually teaching a workshop in downtown LA and some of my students, um, I think I think my student Devin was actually taking photos of her, her. And, you know, I just kind of bombed their party and I saw I saw the nose, so I just started going for it and um, taking some of the shots. But yeah, um, another tip when it comes to editing your shots, generally, so let's say you've taken 20 photos of one scene, just try to choose one and also know that there are times that none of the shots may work out really well. And yeah, just keep keep working the scene. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't know what else to talk about in Lightroom, but um, please leave a comment below and ask me some more questions about um, you know editing Lightroom and stuff like that. And I'll try to answer as many of the, the questions I can and hopefully make more of these videos soon. And yeah, in the meanwhile, if you wanna learn more about street photography, of course, you could always just go on the Google, search Eric Kim blog. Yep, here I am. And yeah, let's go around my blog, learn more about street photography. I just published this article on Sebastian Salgado. If you go to the start here section, there's a lot of really great resources um, that I've put together for free about learning about street photography. Um, and yeah, make sure to check those out. And of course, if you want to take your, your learning to the next level, check out my workshops. Um, you want some camera equipment suggestions, equipment, and books. So I should actually get rid of this equipment section because I think buying books is much better than buying equipment. So I always say buy books, not gear on my blog. And yeah, um, 
let's connect soon guys all right take care peace out